Um, hi everyone, my name is Qian Yu Zhang and uh, I'm a second year master's student at the Department of uh, uh, Ag Econ program. And uh, today I'm presenting my thesis work about the effects of groundwater policies and economic factors uh, on, the on the timing of well drilling decisions. And my uh, advisors are Dr. Karina Shungold and Dr. Taro Miano. So first of all, the main objective of this research are to identify the exogenous factors that can affect farmers' irrigation decision. And uh, the key variables we try to look at is the groundwater policies. So how local groundwater policies can uh, affect the timing of irrigation adoptions with consideration of other uh, exo exogenous determinants, which I will be talking about in the next slide. And uh, for the policy variable, more specifically, we try to look at how farmers respond when a moratorium is announced, when it is implemented, and when the uh, neighboring areas establish a moratorium. So the data description, um, our study region includes nine natural resources districts along the three river basins. The reason why we chose this study region is because this covers most of the well registration historically. And the period of interest is from 1940 to 2017. So the three types of explanatory variables um, are economic, agronomic, and policy. So first, we collected historical data set on the economic factors from 1940 to 2017 uh, on the market prices for corn, wheat, and soybean, and also energy costs for diesel, heating oil, and natural gas. And we also have agronomic factors included, include the soil characteristics and uh, weather on information. Uh, information on weather, sorry. Uh, for the policy variable, uh, we generated three uh, variables. First is numbers of neighboring moratorium. So we manually generated this variable uh, for each NRD at each year. And geographically, if they are located next to each other, then the implementation of well drilling moratorium in one NRD would affect their neighboring uh, NRDs. And also this pre-regulation is a dummy variable that we assigned one to three years prior to the actual implementation of well drilling uh, moratorium. And also post-regulation is also a dummy variable where we assigned one to all the observations after the actual implementation. And since farmers' irrigation decisions don't solely depend on one year's profits or one year's observations, so we calculated five year uh, moving average for market for all the time varying variables include market price for corn wheat and soybean and uh, trend for energy cost and uh, revenue differentials between dry land and irrigated land and also weather in, uh, trend for monthly precipitation and monthly uh, maximum temperature and soil characteristics are constant over time. So after uh, reorganizing and cleaning the data, we selected percentage of sand and silt and uh, available water capacity and slope into our regression. So the fundamental principle of this research is to conduct a survival analysis, which estimate how long a producer as a dryland producer survives until they uh, decide to invest in an irrigation well with consideration of the three exogenous variables. And this simple function, uh, survival function demonstrate what we are trying to analyze is the probability of um, a farmer survives up to a year T and then they switch to irrigated land. And then we run our regression using the Cox uh, proportional hazards model to run, uh, for our regression, first set of regression. Then this is our preliminary results. So as we can see, the expected signs of coefficient uh, include the negative relationship between energy costs and um, farmers' irrigation decision. It means that as the energy costs increase, then farmers are less likely to draw a new one. And also for um, the coefficient on um, corn revenue differentials is positive. It means that as the corn revenue differentials increase, then it is more profitable under irrigated land than dry land uh, production, so that farmers are more likely to draw a new well. And our key variables in the last three rows, for the last one, post-regulation dummy variable, 
it is uh, negative, so it means the probability of drilling a new well after the policy implementation decreases compared to those NRDs without policy intervention. However, our number of neighboring moratoria and pre-regulation uh, dummy variable are both negative, which is inconsistent with our expectations because um, uh, uh, we assume that we expect that they be positive because as the number of neighboring moratorium increase, then uh, farmers in an NRD would uh, increase their probability of drilling a new well due to the few uncertainty about future water supply. But this is only, and the same way works for pre-regulation uh, dummy variable. But this is only our first set of regression results. So right now we are still trying to uh, work on to include and then omit some of the variables to improve our model. And thank you. Do we have a question? There we go. Are you Justin. Talking about just playing around with the logistic regression? Um, for your thinking about going from dry land to irrigated, and then you've got your your time, you know, over time. Um, and then you, I think you can slice it based on your policy decisions. That, that could be kind of cool. Um, just a thought. Mm, you mean like to conduct like a profit using a profit model? Yeah. yeah, we try to. We also did that in the first stage, but uh, since we try to in our uh, main method, we try to use the survival analysis to see how much effect each exogenous variable contribute. Uh -huh. So that's why we yeah, used. But we also tried the problem model for our regression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very thank you. much.